Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Kumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-10. In our last episode, the party made it to Toba's Shrine, where they were assuming that they would be meeting the dragon. Upon formulating a plan, they were instead surprised by a pair of stone giants. While victorious, the party did not come out unscathed, with Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, taking a significant amount of damage. We now return to the abandoned shrine to discover the outcome. Krish moved to the down knight and applied magical healing from his hands to Sir Omel as Yolanda and Phidias gave each of the giants a coup de grace. Brother Stance moved to the edge of the plateau to confirm that additional giants were not headed this way. After giving the all clear, he helped Grish bring Sir Omel to his feet. How do you feel? Grish asked, and the knight nodded weakly. Better, thank you. Slumping against the wall of the old shrine, Sir Omel still felt woozy. Yolanda Two Blades and Phidias the Rogue approached while cleaning off their blades. Do you need a potion, my old friend? asked the gnome. No, no, but thank you, Sir Omel said. He laid his hands upon his own chest, and illumination sprang forth. In a brief flash, the paladin stood tall again and stated, I'm much better now, thank you. A paladin, I take it, asked Yolanda. I've heard you people can heal yourselves. Indeed, young lady, but to a much lesser extent than this cleric can. Thank you again, Grish, he said. Brother Stance, how are you feeling? I, I could use a touch, please. Sir Omel moved to the hobbled monk and laid his hands upon his cohort. After the brief flash of light, the monk said, Thank you, Sir Knight. Grish tended to some minor wounds on Phidias as Harris the mage and Kellox approached. Brother Stance remarked, Nice shooting, my friend. The mage smirked and bowed, pointing out that it was the least he could do since the rest were otherwise engaged. Yolanda and Harris, you check the bodies for anything of interest. Stance, find Phidias. I think he went inside the temple. Kellogg's, you Grish and I can pick up these silver bars that got smashed during the fight, said Sir Elmel. A few minutes later, Harris and Yolanda came back with several gold chains worth a significant sum of money and a crude map. Closer examination showed that it provided information on getting to the shrine from some caves to the north. The mage surmised that the giants had been sent by the dragon to pick up the silver. Grish, Omel, and Kellox had finished restacking the bars on the wagon, but also discovered something. One of the bars had been smashed asunder and broken in half. Inside, the trio discovered that the bars were not solid silver, but were filled with lead. Inside the shrine, Phidias and Stance discovered that the rock that had gone flying near the end of combat had shattered the old tabernacle. The pair called the rest of the party inside to view a newly discovered tomb that had been under the stone structure. The skeletal remains were decorated with expensive gold mask and an ebony wand along with the dusty remains. Phidias jumped into the orifice, which made Yolanda and Kellex uncomfortable. That's a grave you're robbing, the fighter yelled. Phidias paused and looked at the remains. Returning her look, he pointed out that the deceased didn't seem to mind. The gnome picked up the mask and put it over his face. Those in attendance noticed that it seemed to disappear when it was placed on his face. Kellox uttered an old Denobian motto, making the gnome lambast him. I do not need your prayers, and I am not a sinner, said the rogue. Everyone was taken aback at the comment, and Sir Omel asked Phidias when he, when he learned to understand Denobian. The puzzled look on the face brought acknowledgement from Harris. Give me that mask for a moment, please, he said. The mage adorned the mask and asked Kellox to say something in his native language. He did so, and Harris handed the mask back to the gnome. The mage stated, The item is a mask of understanding. Those wearing it can speak and understand any language. This item could be very useful for us. Phidias donned the mask again and grabbed the wand, waving it wildly. 
What does this do? He yelled out. The group dropped to the ground as sparks began to exit the tip, but when the rogue stood still, everyone got up. Grish ripped the wand from his grasp and gave it to Harris. Don't do that again, you damn fool, he said. It's obviously a magical wand, and it could have blown us all up. A low whistle came out of Kellogg's, and Harris secured the wand in his robe. I don't know what it does, but I'll have to do some research to find out, he said. A few more remains kicked by the gnome ended with no more surprises. Sir Omel cleared his throat and Grish spoke. There is one more mystery that perhaps Kellex can enlighten us on. The halfling shrugged his shoulders and pointed out that he was just the delivery boy, but he would try. Brother Stance and Yolanda asked what the surprise was, to wit Grish then presented a fractured silver bar showing the interior to be lead. Phidias began to laugh hysterically and exclaimed, You're cheating a dragon? Kellogg's paled and vehemently shook his head. I, I had no idea. Honestly, no idea. The bars are heavy and they looked silver. I thought they were just silver bars. Yolanda smirked and pointed out that the dragon was not going to be happy about the failed delivery and will be less happy if it discovers that it has been swindled. Sir Omel spoke up, stating... I don't think we have a choice now. Kellogg's asked what he meant, and Grish stepped up. This dragon will eventually discover the ruse and will not be happy. I'd lay silver coins from here to Calantria that Red Bluffs will be targeted unless we resolve the issue first. Brother Stance then said, So you want us to go deal with the dragon first, and then unmask the boyo as a cheat? We do have the upper hand for a moment, Harris the mage said. Certainly the dragon would be expecting these two to drag the silver back to the lair. If we can make good time, we may be able to catch the creature off guard. What about me, piped up Kellogg's? You will stay here with the wagon and the mounts. You will not move from this spot, or I will personally rip your head off and kick it into the bay, said Grish. Do you understand? The tone of his voice made Kellogg's relieve his bladder then and there as he wordlessly nodded. Yolanda pointed out that they had a map and it didn't appear to be too far if she was reading it correctly. Kellogg's also looked and confirmed her assessment. It's probably a day's walk from here and it goes to the coastal mountains. Grish stated, I'm going. I won't speak for the rest of you. Sir Omel piped up followed by nods from Brother Stance, Phidias, and Harris. Milady, said the Knight of Bacchus, will you be joining us? Most definitely, said Yolanda Two Blades. I want to see this warm up close if it's the last thing I do. It may very well be, was the meek reply from Kellogg's. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.